Hello and welcome to AFCO Afternoon, your opportunity to learn how to be a more effective witness for God. We are here in Iloilo at PAFCO. You probably know by now PAFCO is our School of Evangelism, Philippine Amazing Facts Center of Evangelism. And today, before we start our topic, which will be the right arm, Armstrong, the right arm, I'm going to invite you to bow your head with me for a moment of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful that again this afternoon we can, can, can consider how to be effective soul winners as we look at the right arm and how to use this as a tool in evangelism. We ask for the blessing of your presence upon each of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Those of you that have been with us for the last several weeks, you probably noticed something unique. I'm not by myself today. I have with me here at PAFCO, Dr. Wetz de la Cruz. And I'm going to ask, Doctor, where are you from? Uh, I'm from, I'm from Cotabato. I... North Cotabato, that's south of the Philippines, and it's in Mindanao. That's on the island of Mindanao, and what do you do down there, Dr. De La Cruz? Actually, I own a hospital, we call it Mount of Blessings Hospital, and it's a simple hospital, but we also, I think it's the first hospital that has a department for natural way of treating disease. So, me and my wife runs this hospital, and this the, we use the eight laws of health to treat diseases, and we accept degenerative diseases, cancer, uh, renal failure, and we make it a point that we inspire people to live a healthy lifestyle in that place. We're talking this afternoon about the right arm and how it can be a tool for helping us to be better evangelists. You realize that soul winning is a science. And there's an interesting statement that says this. This is actually doubling your success as a soul winner. That's a 100% improvement. The, re the statement reads like this. Medical Ministry, page 245. A gospel minister will be twice as successful in his work if he understands how to treat disease. So as soul winners, it's important for us to learn the simple principles of how to deal with disease. And that's why we have with us today Dr. De La Cruz. A minister of the gospel, that's what I am, and that's what many of you are hoping to be, or wanting to be, or you're learning to be. A minister of the gospel who is also a medical missionary who can cure physical ailments is a much more efficient worker than one who cannot do this. This work as a minister of the gospel, his work as a minister of the gospel is much more complete. Now, of course, our best example is Jesus. He spent much time healing, more time healing than even preaching. You can read in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, that he went about healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And we are actually told from the book Ministry of Healing, during his ministry, Jesus devoted more time to healing the sick than to preaching. And so today we want to talk a little bit about how the health message medical missionary work opens doors for the gospel and Dr. De La Cruz as you've been working down there in your hospital have you seen where the health message has opened up doors for the opportunity for the gospel to enter people's lives can you tell us any experiences you've had oh yes uh, a lot of <clears throat> patients come to our place because of health yeah our, our hospital was already known to treat diseases the natural way. But we have always this regular evening and morning worship in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And because of, and we do health lectures six to eight hours a week for each of our patients. So aside from that, when they come, at first they don't really 
mind to attend worship. But once we do worship just in front of their rooms, the lobby, mm -hmm. and once they listen to this nice message from the Lord, when people are sick, they are very receptive of the gospel message. So once they start attending worship, they join us in prayer, they join, we pray for them, and we have experienced, once they go home, they are happy. They tell us that, doctor, we are so happy. I'm so happy that my daughter got sick. If my daughter did not get sick, I will never know about the Sabbath, about the health message, about the gospel, about Jesus Christ. Praise and God. so we have also Muslims along with us, and we are able to, we have also ways of relating our gospel message to Muslims, all people of all classes. You know, the first thing is the heart. We have a helping heart. We want to help people without any alternative, al mm -hmm. ulterior m motives, just to help, just to bring them to the foot of the cross. So we have several, we were able to build one group, one church, because of the, the health message that we have in our place. So we gather all these patients and we were able to build a simple uh, church for the patient just in, owned by one of the well-known families not Adventists and they allowed us to use their land to build a meeting place for patients. So we were able to baptize about more than 10, 10 souls for Praise God. For, for that, that uh, out of the hospital. So this this message, the health message we gave all around has spread all over. You probably remember from one of our earlier AFCO afternoon sessions, we talked about Christ's method. Christ's method alone will give true success to reaching the people he ministered to their needs. And that's what Dr. De La Cruz has been doing. When people are sick, they have need. And that's why we need to know how to treat disease. Now, you talked about natural treatments. Yes. Is that something that mm -hmm. only a doctor can do and nurses can do? Or can lay people like us also do natural treatments in people's homes and, and find entrance for the gospel? You, you, not, you don't need to be a doctor to, to, to help people. No. Uh, just tell them what's the best food for them, nutrition, and this natural way of treating disease. You don't, you, we don't have to be a doctor. We just, just give them the right food and the eight laws of health as stated in the Spirit of Prophecy book. What are those eight laws of health? Uh, as we have discussed earlier, that we should make God first, Christ-centered, that Christ is the healer, uh -huh. trust in the Lord, trust in God, in your eating, so nutrition, it should be related with God. Whenever you eat, you drink water, and you do exercise, and you expose yourself to sun, and you have the uh, self-control, fresh air, all these things are free. God gave them to us, and whether you eat, you drink, or you work, or you, you go to the sunlight, breathe the fresh air, don't do any vices, those simple things of advice, you don't need to be a doctor to teach people that. No, you will not be accused of malpractice suit if you teach them to eat vegetables and fruits. That's no crime. So all we have to do is teach them the simple lifestyle. At first, I, I was just, you know, I was trained to be a doctor to prescribe medicine. But when the Lord says, just give the simple way, simple treatment. So. When I tried to use those simple remedies, I was so amazed, really amazed. How come this person who has scheduled for five bypasses was able to get through 
the operation without just just simple eight laws of health. So this time I am more excited with those simple laws of health than giving them all this pharmacological intervention. There is a saying that you are what you eat. I suppose you see that quite frequently in the hospital as a doctor. Yes, yes. So what would you recommend for we Adventists if we're to use the right arm, the health message, then should we practice the nutrition, the, the, the food that we're recommending for people to eat for their health? Should we also practice that as church members? Yes. You should practice what you <laughs> preach, of course. So uh, I have, uh, even me myself, before I went into this natural way of treating disease, my patient, I, he was desperate. And he said, doctor, nobody would accept me anymore in, in our locality. I was already sent to the heart center to be operated on. And he said, what shall I do? Nobody will accept me anymore. I don't have one million for the operation. She, he, he was scheduled for five bypasses. Hmm. And I said, I did not practice this yet, but I was a vegetarian though. And I said, OK, just eat at my table. Amazingly, just say one week, his blood cholesterol went down to normal. And he had a stroke, and he, was, he started walking. And all my colleagues just keep on watching him, that when he, will he fall and die? Mm -hmm. And they would criticize me what I'm teaching them, just nutrition. Just eat on my table. 10 days after he was off, he was down to his home. And he, you know, people with myocardial infarction are not allowed, not allowed to drive. Mm -hmm. But you know what? After two months, he drove from Mindanao to Manila, round trip, on a truck. He did that twice. <laughs> but you know what? It needs our knees. Once yeah. the patient is in our hospital, I prayed a lot. That's what I have enjoyed now, praying for that patient. And God intervened. If he doesn't get healed, then God would be a liar. Mm -hmm. He wrote it in the... Uh, the spirit of prophecy, our health books, that's why our health books, we are very, we are very fortunate that we have these health books with us. So as church members, are, can you recommend to us as church members what books we could read that would help us not only to be healthy ourselves, but also how we can use the right arm in opening the way for the gospel? Yes, our books, we have all these books around for the past more than 100 years. The Ministry of Healing, Councils on Diet and Food, even non-Adventists has this under their armpit. Those who practice natural way of treating disease has these Councils on Diet and Food. We have lots of books on health. And you know what the principle is? The God who created this human body is the same God who inspired our prophet Ellen White to write all these mm -hmm. health advices, health counsels. They, they, God, God will not counsel us if we are healthy, if we're doing good, but no, we, we, we didn't follow. That's why I advise our, health, our, our church members to really follow the laws of health, to read our health books, because we, are, we have all these books around with us, and yet it's a shame if we die of heart disease, all these degenerative diseases, because we do not listen, we do not follow the Word of God. As a pastor, I observe that the reason why people don't like to read books like Councils on Diets and Foods, because they're afraid they're going to have to give up some food that they like to eat. Yeah. But I've also observed that when people get sick, even church members, when church members get sick, then they're willing to make the changes. And would you recommend as a pastor or as a doctor that we make the changes before we get sick? No, don't wait. It might be too late. <laughs> you know, this is the right arm. You know, if you practice the healthy lifestyle, even your 
spiritual discernment will deepen. Mm -hmm. Once you read the word of God, God could work in you because your, your system is not clogged up. Your brain has good circulation. You could think. Your reflexes will be, you know, I, I used to, I, I'm slow. But when I became a vegetarian, I could even cut the glass that's about close to the floor. I did not do that intentionally, but our, even our nerve uh, in synapses would be very accurate. So even in our readings, you know, Christ fasted. Mm -hmm. And we have to have a fast. You have to sacrifice meat, fish, and all those things. Just eat fresh fruits and vegetables. Tell us, uh, doctor, is it possible to use the right arm if we're not practicing it ourselves? Oh, it's a shame. It's a shame. You tell people, oh, if you see a doctor and the doctor will say to you, you know, sir, you, you don't have to smoke. Would you believe that the, the, the smoking patient will listen to the doctor who smokes? <laughs> you know, do not Probably eat not. meat because uh, meat will cause hypertension. But here comes a doctor uh, uh, who is fat and he has also hypertension. You wait, you get my blood pressure. The same is true with us. We, we preach health, but we should also practice health. Practice what you preach. So apparently, some of us have a crippled right arm. The right arm, of course, is the medical missionary work. And perhaps for some time, we have had a paralyzed right arm because we haven't been practicing it ourselves. Yes. We, it's, it's an entering wedge. You cannot enter the door without the arm. Using the arm. Using the arm. Exactly. You cannot enter their lives unless you heal their disease. Ask them, how do you feel? You. That's why yesterday we had an outreach program, and it inspires us to see patient who seems to be uh, impossible to walk, but now his arms are and legs are now moving. Mm -hmm. because of what our PAFCO students has been doing, just visiting, giving the simple remedies, giving them the right type of food. So in addition to nutrition, what are some things that lay people like us could do, church members like us could do, to use the right arm, medical missionary work, to open the door for the gospel? We've talked about nutrition. Are there other things that we could do? That are we we who are not doctors? Uh, teach them how to walk, exercise, uh, as I have, uh, you know, a productive exercise you could do gardening. Now you, you grow your own fruits and vegetables. Uh, exercise, what more? Breathe the fresh air, teach them Open your windows, you know, just simple opening the windows would help you the night that you have good air and rest. You no, know, we have all those eight laws of health. What about some natural treatments? Natural such as treatments, hydrotherapy. hydrotherapy. Is that something that lay people could do? Yes, we could do Church that. Church members? Church members. Charcoal. We could uh, use charcoal uh, for. Uh, Treating disease, you know, just charcoal poultice and the, the use of water, it, it could really help. Those of you church members who don't perhaps know how to use the simple treatments, well, we invite you to our next PAFCO session. That's one of the things we share at PAFCO is some of the simple treatments that you can utilize in people's homes like hydrotherapy, charcoal, uh, nutrition. Nutrition. Juicing will help. In fact, in my hospital, that's the main pharmacy in my hospital. We give them juices. So you make up juices, juices out of vegetables and out fruits? Out of vegetables and fruits. You know, one glass of carrot juice, you need how much carrots? About a half kilo of carrots. 
If I ask you to eat half kilo of carrots, could you? It is, it is very concentrated. You know, carrots has uh, beta carotene. It's a good antioxidant. And we are deficient. That's why we get sick, because we're deficient of all these nutrients. So we give, juicing is, is the mainstay of my, of my natural uh, way of treating disease. We give them lots of juices and raw food. Mm -hmm. Juices. Some of you might be thinking, well, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not sure I can do some of these things. Let me just share with you an experience that I had as a pastor. We were doing an evangelistic meeting in another country. And this country, the particular area where we were in was very primitive. They didn't have telephones. And we always looked forward when we would move into an apartment, to, if they had a telephone in the apartment, we felt privileged. We were in Eastern Europe shortly after the fall of communism. And we moved into this apartment for a seminar in one city and there was no phone. But the people that had made the arrangements for this program, they said, or for our housing, they said, well, the neighbor downstairs, she has a phone, and she's okayed us for you to go down and you can use her phone. We would like to, we like to call home, once, usually once a month, give our report to Amazing Facts. So after we moved into this apartment, we went down to meet this lady, the neighbor, and I was there with my translator, and as we were making the arrangements for the phone call, international phone call from Eastern Europe back to America, this lady began talking to my translator of how she was planning to visit the extra sense doctor the next day. Now, the extra sense doctor in Eastern Europe was almost like a witch doctor. I don't know, do you have witch doctors here in <laughs> the <Yeah>. Philippines? Yeah. <laughs> this was almost like a witch doctor. So after I finished my phone call, I was talking to this lady through my translator, and I told her, I said, I want to encourage you not to go to the extra sense doctor. She says, but I have to have some help. She showed me, she had on her leg this enormous varicose Ulcer, ulcer. Open sore. It was probably that big. Wow. It was a huge sore. And she, because of her lack of circulation, she had de developed this ulcer on her leg. And she said, what am I supposed to do? And I said, well, we have a doctor with us. We had a health program in our evangelistic meeting. I said, we have a doctor with us. We'll invite the doctor to come and look at your leg. And so the next day he came, looked at her leg, and he prescribed for her charcoal. Charcoal. And because we were just upstairs, we were the neighbor upstairs, you could and it was it. natural because we were using her phone for us to be the therapist. So we began going down once, actually twice a day, we would go down, we put a charcoal poultice on that varicose ulcer. We do that in the morning, we did that in the evening. Working. And of course, being evangelists, we invited the lady to come to our evangelistic meeting, but she was of a different church. Oh, yeah. And so she said, no, she wasn't interested. She, I guess somebody had warned her about who we were. We were Protestants, and she wasn't. But we were continued treating her, and every time we'd have a treatment, we'd have prayer after yeah. the treatment. We prayed, of course, before, but we'd have a prayer for God's blessing at the end of the treatment. And the ulcer began slowly to get a little smaller. And then we thought we should do some hydrotherapy. And she didn't, she wasn't diabetic, so we began doing hydrotherapy and we put her leg in this big bucket of water, hot water, and then we'd do that for three minutes and then we'd put it in her foot in a bucket of cold water for 30 seconds. And it was amazing, the charcoal was starting to help, but the hydrotherapy, boy, that thing, that ulcer, that it really started shriveling up and it wasn't long before it had completely healed over. And that lady was so impressed what was happening, she decided she was going to come to our evangelistic meeting. And I told her, you come, you can prop your, we'll put a chair there, you can prop your leg up on the chair. And so she came and she'd sit there. And even she had this big pit bull dog that she would take with her every time she'd go outside, she'd take him for a walk. One time he took her, this is after she started coming to our meetings, he pulled her down, she fell over and he was dragging her down, he got all, she got all scarred up from her, oh, her yeah. dog, holding on to her dog, but she still came. And at the end of that seminar, that lady was baptized. You know, charcoal is really powerful. I have leg swellings, in fact, just lately, I could just remember, he had, I had two or three brain tumors. 
and they were brought to my hospital because he, he was already lethargic and no, no hospital would accept that patient. Mm -hmm. So what I did, we shaved off the head, we packed the whole head with charcoal. Amazingly, after, after less than a week, the patient was walking. Hmm. And now the, we have one now, it's about it's more than six months, still alive. Mm -hmm. I had one patient more than three years now, still alive. So as a doctor, Dr. Dela Cruz, do you see that the health message, the right arm, actually is more effective at reaching some people than just going and offering them Bible studies? Yeah. Uh, when people are sick, when they feel something wrong inside, and you come in and help them using this health uh, you, if you do, you, you come to them to help them in their health problems, uh, their hearts are open. They easily accept the message from God. And you know what? They're touched, not because you're, you, you're a doctor or what, but because you have the attitude to, to help them. Mm -hmm. Actually, Jesus Christ made that an example that he has the heart, he feels the, the pains, and he goes and bends to little children, even those who are sick, he, he spent really time. There is a statement from the book of Evangelism that says, I wish to tell you that soon there will be no work done in ministerial lines, but medical missionary work. So if you learn how to be a medical missionary, you actually expand your length of service because the time will come and we won't be able to do other types of work. The work of a minister is to minister. Our ministers are to work on the gospel plan of ministering. You will never be ministers after the gospel order till you know or till you show a decided interest in medical missionary work. The gospel of healing and blessing and strengthening. And that's what we call the right arm. This is what we're talking about here with Dr. Dela Cruz. He's been using the right arm for how long now? Uh, for the past 18 years now. 18 years. Now, when we talk about the right arm, you've been using that for 18 years. That's not the giving them shots and pills. That's more of the natural. natural. Do you offer both? Both. I use both. Why? It's a hospital. So uh -huh. people come with wounds, all of this. You have to accept them. Now you cannot just let us also be balanced that we should use anesthesia. Yeah. People who have, who were not uh, vegetarians and they come with very high blood pressure, unless you lower that, Mm -hmm. But my, 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 my program in the hospital, at first I use drugs mm -hmm. and gradually wean them out from the drugs, not making them drug dependent. Mm -hmm. But of course there are some remedies that we could use in lieu of drugs. So we use herbs and all of those natural ways. So gradually we, we shift, we shift until they become drug free. The object of the right arm is what? The purpose of the right arm. We use yeah. the right arm as medical missionaries, but what's it's the an, ultimate it, purpose? It is an entering wedge. It's uh, for, for us to share to them the gospel. So the body, the, this is just the arm, but the arm is not the body. So if I want to be an effective soul winner for the Lord and I only have one arm, I'm handicapped, right? Yes. <laughs> so we want to encourage you church members, use the right arm. First of all, you have to practice it in your own life. And are there benefits to the church members for, for practicing the right arm? 
This is the principle. While you save, you are while you save others, you are also being saved. You know, you cannot tell others to do this, to do that, unless you practice it. But as you practice the healthy lifestyle, not knowing while saving others, you also save yourself. Exactly. I wanted to share a couple references relating to the reasons for medical missionary work. And our students here, we shared these reasons, but you'd like to see them perhaps as well. Some of the reasons for medical missionary work. Number one, you double your soul winning success. As we read when we started, a gospel minister will be twice as successful if he understands how to treat disease. So you would be even more successful than me if I don't know how to treat disease as a pastor and you're able to treat disease and also share the gospel with them, you'd be twice as successful. That's what the word That's what says. It says. <laughs> so you double your success as a soul winner by using the right arm. Another reason, second reason, is to follow the example of Jesus. He was a Healer. Medical missionary. And so as we do that work, we're following his example. A third reason is to access otherwise closed doors. You're down there in Mindanao. I, we underst I understand that there's more Muslims down there than perhaps up north. Have you seen where the right arm, the medical missionary work, has actually opened doors for mus into the Muslim community or into Muslim uh, individuals? In fact, Right now, we have these programs for Muslims, and they treat us as brothers, but because we don't eat pork, we, uh -huh. and they consider us, uh, they have this haram, and the makro, and they have the uh, halal, halal. But the Seventh Adventist is more than halal. We don't eat shrimps, we, uh, we don't eat even uh, beef, mm -hmm. so to them it's <laughs> some, but, but to us, he calls us, they call us, doctor, you're more than an Islam, more than an Islam. So even politicians, even our neighbors who has closed doors, those people who are prejudiced to the gospel, open their doors because of the health message we have. So the third reason for medical missionary work is to access otherwise closed doors. The fourth reason is to, ref to reform and improve our own lives. As we follow the principles of health that doctor has been emphasizing and that we as Adventists have known for so many years, we experience the benefits. Doctor mentioned that he's a vegetarian. I personally am a vegetarian. I became a vegetarian even before I became a Christian. I was in college and my parents invited me or urged me to go to an Adventist college and I went there for the wrong reasons. I'll just mention, I was told that there were three women for every man at this particular Adventist college. I said, oh, that's where I want to go to college. I was not a Christian, you understand. But when I went there, it was popular to be vegetarian. So I thought, well, I'm going to try this to see what it's like. Uh -huh. And I was amazed how much better I felt as a vegetarian. I had more energy. I was running. I was lifting weights. What impressed me the most was how I could think so much more clearly, clearly. as a vegetarian. It's true. So I've been following that now for the last 30 years. The fifth reason for medical missionary work is to purify the church. This might be a surprise for you, but we're actually told that. This is Evangelism 263, which says, The work of health reform is the Lord's means for lessening suffering in our world and for purifying His church. Amazingly. So the fifth reason for medical missionary work is to purify the church. The sixth reason is to prepare people for Christ's return. As Dr. mentioned, as we seek to help others, we, we help ourselves. And there's a statement that reads like, this is for co-porters, but we can apply it for medical missionaries. What can be a better preparation for the coming of the Lord and for the reception of other truths essential to prepare a people for His coming than to arouse the people to see the evils of this age and to stir them to reformation from self-indulgent and unhealthful habits? As we share with them the principles of health, 
We're actually helping them to prepare for Christ's return. That's the sixth reason. And then the seventh reason is that the medical missionary work is indeed the, truly the last work that will be done. We read that. I wish to tell you, Ellen White says that soon there will be no work done in ministerial lines but medical missionary work. Somebody shared with me recently this reference from the book Councils on Health. I actually didn't remember reading this until just recently. And it reads like this, as religious aggression subverts the liberties of our nation. This would be referring to America. And we realize that freedom is shrinking in America. So it says, as a religious aggression subverts the liberties of our nation, and that's even happening here in the Philippines, those who would stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unfavorable positions. Mm -hmm. That would be us. For their own sake, they should, while they have opportunity, become intelligent in regard to disease, its causes, prevention, and cure. And those who do this will find a field of labor Amen. anywhere. Amen. So as you learn how to recognize disease, how to avoid disease, how to treat disease, even as lay people, some of the simple things like charcoal, hydrotherapy, then as the pressure comes at end time, we lose our freedoms, religious persecution comes, we will find a field of service anywhere where we can work for the Lord. The seventh reason for medical missionary work is truly it will be the last work. There's the seven. And our PAFCO students, we went through these in detail. I'm just sharing with you, those of you that are watching in your churches, double your soul winning success, number one. Number two, to follow the example of Jesus. Number three, to access otherwise closed doors. Number four, to reform and improve our own lives. Number five, to purify the church. Number six, to prepare people for Christ's return. And number seven, because it truly is the last word. Actually, this is, we are preparing for Christ's return. The question is, what is our diet in heaven? So if we're preparing, we, we are preparing our appetite so if we're not vegetarians, people in heaven are vegetarians, of course. We'll all be vegetarians in heaven? Yes, because heaven is a perfect place. If we were, we're used to eat fish, probably in heaven there will be no fishing. <laughs> You're not allowed to kill. I know a man, he's a friend of mine, he works for the... Uh, North American Division of Seventh-day Adventists and as a division employee as many of our division employees are he was traveling and as he was flying he of course ordered a vegetarian meal and sitting beside him was somebody uh, just a seat mate and and said to him he said I noticed that you ordered vegetarian food why are you vegetarian and this Seventh-day Adventist pastor division employee he said well he said, I personally believe that Jesus is coming soon. And I want to go to heaven. And they don't serve meat in heaven. The, <laughs> the diet in heaven is all vegetarian. So I'm just preparing, preparing. myself Practicing. to live in heaven. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was a good answer. Good answer. Now I want to come back for just a moment to the true object of medical missionary work. Sometimes we get lost in medical missionary work. That becomes the right arm becomes the whole body. body. <laughs> Which of course is the other extreme. There's an extreme to almost everything. The purpose of the right arm is to open the door to the gospel. And this is from the book The Medical Evangelist, or the magazine rather. We should, we're told, we should ever remember that the object of the medical missionary work is to point sin-sick men and women to the man of Calvary who, who takes away the sin of the world. So it's not that I can say, oh, I'm a vegetarian, I'm better than you. Yeah. The purpose is that we can point people to Jesus, Jesus. the Savior. And the medical missionary work opens doors of opportunity for that. God's true commandment-keeping people will be instructed by Him. The true medical missionary will be wise in the treatment of the sick using the remedies that nature provides. 
So we use the remedies nature provides, but the object, the true object is, what is it, doctor? Bring people to Christ. To win people to Christ. I found this interesting poem some time ago. It reads like this. If pain and fever go away, if vile infection is held at bay, yet if their unbelief does stay, the health worker has failed. If all the numbers come out smooth, though sugars and blood fats improve, yet if their sins lie unreproved, the health worker has failed. If all the herbal pills are right, if hydro and massage are tight, yet still if guilt retains its might, the health worker has failed. Amen. So the true object of medical missionary work is to win souls for Jesus. Is there anything else you'd like to share with those that are watching our AFCO afternoon program? I'm inspiring our members of the church to join in this work. Let us break all differences among ourselves, pointing fingers to each other, finding faults. I challenge everyone to stop all those bickering or all those fine faulting. Let us unite in working, because in working, we become, in working for Christ, we come closer to Christ, we look at Jesus Christ, and the more we become inspired. Just be happy working for Jesus Christ. It is the greatest privilege in life. Amen. We want to encourage you, church members, to not only work for Jesus, but to use the right arm. If you don't have your right arm for gospel work, then you're a handicapped soul winner. So first of all, apply it in your own life. And then you can use that as you reach out to people's needs, minister to people's needs. We're going to end our AFCO afternoon program today by singing the Christian hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be. And I'm going to invite you to stand with me as we conclude with this hymn. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love, at the impulse of Thy love. Take my feet and let them be Swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing. Always only for my King. Always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a might would I withhold, not a might would I withhold. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. It shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour. At thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will be over. Before we pray today, I want to say a special thank you to Dr. Dela Cruz for joining us this afternoon for AFCO Afternoon. 
Let's bow our heads as we pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful for giving us the right arm of the gospel, the medical missionary work. We pray that you would help us as church members to use these health principles in our own lives and then teach us how we can use these as a right arm to open the door for the gospel and that we might truly be able to double our success as soul winners. Bless each church member to that end, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for AFCO Afternoon. We'll look forward to seeing you again next week at this same time. God bless you.